This particular grant from Texas Parks of Wildlife has aided the Parks and Recreation Department before, like creating this lovely city park, which is so popular with the children of commerce. And once upon a time, it was just another empty plot of land, much like the one by A.C. Williams Elementary. It's a quick and easy process for anyone who wants to donate. As long as you're over the age of 17 and weigh at least 110 pounds, just one pint of blood can save up to three lives. Whether it's in the Honors College, the Student Activities Board, or the student government, you're guaranteed to go any place on this campus and still find a student who's Greek. If the Parks and Recreation Department of the City of Commerce end up securing this grant from Texas Wildlife and Parks, then all of this land right behind A.C. Williams Elementary School will be home to a brand new park by 2016. I'm Kelly Fulton, KETV, Main Media News. Springtime at A&M Commerce is a high point for the combination of tradition and charity. One annual event has students donating more than just their time and their money. Kappa Delta Chi Sorority teamed up with the Kappa Alpha Order for their annual Spring Blood Drive sponsored by the American Red Cross. Katie Chi member Thalia Sanchez says that by combining their efforts, they do more good. Um, it's something that we've done, this is our second time actually collaborating together. And we're just trying to bring, or helping out the community with the American Red Cross and um, having people donate blood since there's always somebody that's, that's needing blood. And It's a quick and easy process for anyone who wants to donate. As long as you're over the age of 17 and weigh at least 110 pounds, just one pint of blood can save up to three lives. After signing up at the front desk, students are asked to go over a short safety handbook followed by a quick interview to assess if they are healthy enough to donate blood that day. After they're cleared, the donation can begin. Kappa Alpha member Josh Hughes says it's a win-win charitable opportunity for students on a budget. It's a great easy way to donate to the community and, and help out. Uh, there's plenty of times where people go into surgeries or you know, breaking a leg or breaking an arm in college and uh, blood is necessary. It's an easy way to, without, to help out without having to uh, donate the limited funds that college students have. I'm Kelly Fulton, KETV, Maine Media News. An empty plot of land by A.C. Williams Elementary School might soon be home to a new activities venue for the City of Commerce. But before construction can begin, the City of Commerce must first deed the land to Parks and Recreation. The Director of Parks and Recreation, Ricky Harris, proposed a deal to the Commerce ISD Board of Trustees to ensure the deed to the land. Uh, basically, I approached the school board last week. Uh, the school board would be willing to deed over a portion of land so that we could use it towards our Texas Parks and Wildlife grant. This particular grant from Texas Parks of Wildlife has aided the Parks and Recreation Department before, like creating this lovely city park, which is so popular with the children of commerce. And once upon a time, it was just another empty plot of land, much like the one by A.C. Williams Elementary. You'll see that is where uh, the projected spot for the skate park will go. So, as you can tell, there's going to be a disc golf course, a uh, walking trail, and a skate park. You know, the, uh, the school board didn't have to give us that land, and uh, they gave it to us for the betterment of the community, and, and you know, I want to thank all of them and everyone else who supported us. If the Parks and Recreation Department of the City of Commerce end up securing this grant from Texas Wildlife and Parks, then all of this land right behind A.C. Williams Elementary School will be home to a brand new park by 2016. I'm Kelly Fulton, KETV, Maine Media News. You've just checked into LAD's Campus Spotlight. The light is on in 3, 2, 1. Welcome to LAD's Campus Spotlight. I'm Kelly Fulton. This is the segment of Lions After Dark where we highlight a particular person, topic, or event of interest on the campus of Texas A&M University Commerce. Today, the spotlight is on the Morris Recreation Center referendum. We've all seen the posters around campus and the graphics on our Twitter feed, but what exactly is this referendum? 
Well, we've got your answer right here. Joining me now is Rick Rosenstingle, the director of the Rec Center. How are you, Rick? I'm doing great this evening. All right, so it's great to have you here. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more what the referendum actually is? The uh, referendum was a student initiative uh, brought forth by uh, students of our university. Attention a and Commerce students. I hope you've been listening because it's time for a pop quiz. The question is, what is the only college music show on your station by students for students? Time's up. The correct answer is Lions After Dark. Now pay attention because this part will be on the final. Lions After Dark airs Monday through Thursday from 9 to 11 p.m. on your station, 88.9 KETR. Fifteen minutes after the hour, you're listening to Lions After Dark. I'm Kelly Fulton. And I'm Faith Worley. We're going to take a look at your local weather forecast now. Uh, If my computer allows me, there we go. Tonight we're looking at a 20% chance of showers after 2 a.m. Oh my god, I could cry. I know, no more rain. (laughs) Anyway, we've got, um, for Thursday, showers are likely mainly after 8 a.m. and some patchy fog before 8 a.m., so make sure you're going to be careful when you're driving to work. Otherwise, we'll have cloudy skies and a high near 62, and the chance of precipitation is 60%, so I highly recommend you grab an umbrella. Thursday night, we've got showers likely mainly before 8 p.m., and it'll be cloudy with a hot, no, not a high, a low of 47 and some light wind throughout the evening. And Friday, we've got another 50% chance of showers. So again, I guess we just can't escape this rain, can we, Faith? No, but uh, it's supposed to clear up a little like next week, right? I believe so. Uh, Fortunately, I can't see that far into the future. I'm not raving. Fingers crossed because it's (laughs) spring break and we need no rain. (laughs) Exactly. Currently outside our studios on the campus of Texas A&M University Commerce, it's 55 degrees and fair. Faith, why don't you tell us about some KETR events? All right. Well, this is your station, 88.9 KETR. I'm Kelly Fulton here with your local and community news. Residents of Cooper, Texas can expect the legalization of beer and wine to be on the ballot in an upcoming election for May 2015. This story comes to us from our very own KETR.org. The petition for the legal sale of beer and wine off-premise for many cities in Delta County is still very much active. Delta County serves many smaller communities, the biggest of which is Cooper, Texas. According to the Secretary of State, it appears that Cooper had failed a legalization election in January of 1971, meaning that the prohibition election was not successful. A prohibition election can only be performed on a city that was wet before the election, and since Cooper was dry before the election, that negates that election. Of the 254 counties in Texas, 11 are dry, 194 are partially wet, and 49 are completely wet. If petitions from the community continue, Delta could be the next Texas county to legalize the sale of beer and wine. Delta County Judge Herb Brookshire said he will not be addressing the issue before his term ends in December. The Secretary of State said by law, the deadline to order an election by the Commissioner's Court would be February 27, 2015. Also from KETR.org, a quick word on the tax status for residents of Commerce. City of Commerce Mayor Dr. John Bellotti says it appears that the City of Commerce taxes will remain the same for 2014 and 2015. The mayor credits City Manager Mark Clayton for good fiscal management in avoiding a tax hike. For the full story by Dr. John Mark Dempsey, log on to KETR.org and listen to the clip from Blacklands Cafe. From TAMUC.edu, A&M Commerce named one of the fastest growing colleges. The Chronicle for Higher Education has ranked Texas A&M University Commerce at number 17 among its fastest growing colleges. In a study published by the Almanac of Higher Education 2014, in the fall of 2012, enrollment at Texas A&M University Commerce was numbered at 8,542. By the fall of 2012, that number increased to 11,871. Vice President of Student Access and Success, Dr. Mary Hendricks says, Our university has been focused on student access and success, as well as creating a residential campus with new residence halls and vibrant campus life. We saw an immediate change when we created the one-stop shop in 2009, demystifying the complexities of applying to college, applying for financial aid, and receiving academic support and services has made a difference. We are a university focused on personalizing the educational process. 
The Chronicle of Higher Education's ratings are based on its in-house analysis of data from the U.S. Department of Education. To see all these stories and many more, log on to KETR.org for more information. That concludes our local and community news, and now back to the music.